right, back to Fumiko. I swear I'm calm after that little rant, but uh, it's always bugged me that... Uh, have you been to the Zeus cluster yet? The places I've visited were absolutely beautiful, stunning to say the least. One place I remember fondly is the homeworld of Ariana the Beauty, a quiet, almost tranquil place surrounded by a never-ending ocean. An island so peaceful that you want to stay there forever. It even has its own virtual waterfall, and someone managed to simulate falling leaves to add to the natural atmosphere. It's a truly unique space, even in the Zeus cluster. This kind of reminds me of like a future where that world's game that online worlds thing was like turned out to be the real like the real deal and this th these are some memory fragments that I like nice and easy to find that's the kind of collectible I like there's seven clusters named Cronus, Hyperion, Tia, Zeus, Thermos, Ede, and Tethys the actual infrastructure of the homeworld server system is kept a secret by the AIM but since it's based on, the, on an open source project made possible with the contributions of thousands of developers, we can still access the initial documents that led to the creation of this network. Multiple homeworlds connected to a district. A small network of homeworlds that happen to be close to each other. These districts are then combined to a cluster, and they form the entirety of the network. What was meant to be a decentralized network was, was altered so that a connection to Hadra passed through a secure node first. There are no direct connections between the homeworlds anymore, but only client-server-client relationships. Oops. Oh, god damn it! A direct connection can only be established for a short time frame. Most likely, you won't have, you won't stumble upon one, even if it was right in front of you. Uh, if someone managed to, if someone managed to establish a new direct connection between AI homeworlds, I am wouldn't be aware of it. To prevent these manual connections from appearing. So-called AI entities, most likely the spirits, are looking for these backdoors constantly to fix them. The cost of collecting such a backdoor to use it for a longer time is absurdly high. Okay. Wait, inverted. No. I don't know why that's like just a regular button that automatically changes that setting. Um, it kind of makes sense that the stuff is easy to find here too, because, you know, it's a library. You just look on through the books. Um... Crap, I had two things I wanted to mention. I think I forget one of them. Um. Aw, oh dang, I was gonna say something. I hate when that happens. You're like, you're about to say a thing. And it happens a lot in, in you know, videos, because, like, you know, game things happen. Um. I wonder where the other one could be. Wait, is that something way at the top? I saw something at the top. Um, camera doesn't go all the way up. I think that was just my imagination. There's nothing up here. Well, back to that rant. Oh, there's there's everything. Um, I think I lost that thought, but... About hidden groups inside the network. The network and its principles was created by connecting private homeworld servers all around the world. After a while... Gosh dang it! I want to press A to, like, make the text appear, but I don't want to skip it. I, I really hate when games do the letter-by-letter -letter thing. Like, there's no reason for that. I don't know why games even do that at all. Um, but I want to see all the words, so I press A, and then it skips, and it's... Ugh. Just, if you're going to do that, make an option to just show all the text at once. I absolutely always do that. Um, however, a solution to, to prevent hackers and trolls to disturb these public places was needed quickly. If your storage contained any software that was on a public ban list, you were denied access. This made them less accessible, but more peaceful. Be foolish to expect the people who cannot enter the network to disappear. They find them in private networks or diverse in the public network with cloaking devices. I would even say that exclu by excluding these people, the AIM supported the formation of larger groups that are now working against the network itself. Not because they hate the network, but because they hate what the AIM has done with it. Sounds familiar. Yeah, back to the whole games and empathy thing. The there's this general thread of, oh, games can't teach you X. Here's the thing. Um, what is different? What is inherently different and negative about a visual novel versus a regular novel? I could make a game 
you know, possibly in, in scare quotes, but I could make a game that is just linear, you know, 500 pages if it were printed out, no choices, but it's a game because, you know, you got to launch it and, you know, you press buttons and that's a game, but it is effectively identical to a book. And, you know, obviously a real situation is going to be a little bit more complex than that, but I think that pretty obviously shows anything that a book can do, you can do in a game. You can have a crap load of dialogue. In fact, games often have so much more dialogue, they're a little bit more like books than they can be like movies. Um, anything a movie can do, a game can do, because, you know, it's kind of a common criticism of AAA games even, that they're movies, but you know. Anything that you can shoot in a movie, you can put in a game, but then you just have to press the start button to start the movie. And I'm not saying that diminishes games or movies, but if you can show it in a movie, you can show it in a game. It being in a game doesn't lessen it, you know? There's not as many, you know, big budget, touchy-feely productions in games as there are in movies, but that's not inherent to the medium. Uh, the same is true for music. You can make a game that's, you know, 95% music with, you know, an interaction layer that's barely relevant slapped on top of there. If you can do it in music, you can do it in a game. It's the same in pretty much every medium. That's possibly the coolest thing about games is they don't really have an essential quality. You know, music, the essential quality is, you know, listening to it. You know, reading is the essential quality of, you know, books. Games don't really necessarily have to have music. They don't necessarily have to have visuals. Um, arguably, Interaction is the one thing they need, but interaction isn't really entirely necessary in my opinion either. It's definitely a strength of games. It's something that's completely unique to them. Well, almost completely. You know, there's theoretically interactive, you know, you make interactive art with other stuff, but generally not to the degree of a video game. So you can make stuff like One Shot, you can make stuff like Undertale that you can't really do in another medium. But you could also do what you could other do in another medium, in games. So, when people say, oh, games can't do that, it's like, would you make that argument about a book? Would you be like, nah, books can't teach you things. <laughs> you know, it's just a book. You know, books are for kids. You know, little kids read books, you know? So, obviously, they're bad, because kids do it. Because people, you know, it's, it's consumer product. Books are consumer products. So, it can't be art, you know? <sighs> I mean, it's just mass consumption. I mean, think about those arguments. A lot of those arguments against games, super easy to apply them to any other medium, and it's no more valid against those mediums than it is against games. It's just, frankly, stupid bullshit that does not deserve any kind of oxygen, and I'm really disappointed that in 2017, I gotta be talking about this. Hopefully one day, I'll look back at this video and be like, oh, pff, pff, that was a thing? People were like that? That's amazing. But... I've had that opinion for pretty much about 10 years, so, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily going away. It seems to be, people seem to be less resistant to stuff like Night in the Woods, um, Undertale, you know, Undertale has a lot of resistance, but not particularly because of that. Um, it's one of those things where I think just shitty people die off slowly. It's kind of, that's kind of the biggest problem in humanity in general just that bad people take a long time to go away and we don't really have a good way to make them go away other than kill them which is usually not really appropriate sometimes but not usually not particularly not for this particular issue that would be a bit excessive anyway after 50 years the network has come a long way that i would hope so 50 years i, I don't know about 50 like the internet is like 20 years old, think about that. I don't know the exact time, but like, you know. It was just becoming a thing. There's a person. There's wacky, waving, arm flailing, inflatable tube men down there! Holy shit! Oh, freaking wacky, wailing, waving, arm flatable, inflatable, uh, I can't words. I'm sorry, I'm just in awe of wacky, inflatable, arm flailing tube men. A network for 50 years, like... That seems really weird to even say. Like, imagine talking to somebody about, yeah, the internet's gone quite a ways in, tw in 20 years. It's like, 
It's not even recognizable. You know, if you showed, you know, the current internet, I mean, you can't really show on someone the internet, can you? But if you showed somebody from a rap net, like the current uses of the internet, like there's so much stuff they wouldn't even think is like a possible or they wouldn't think makes sense. So I don't know how you could even talk about 50 years. I guess that's kind of a folly of, of sci-fi stuff is we don't really know. Like, anyway, I, this keep, game keeps giving me on tangents, and I guess, I don't know, it depends on whether you like my tangents or not. I guess this is either the best kind of game or the worst kind of game, but that's something I like with how I do my stuff, is that if you don't like this kind of game, I'll be playing a different game, like, tomorrow or next week at the very latest, you know, so if you don't like a thing, you can just come back later. Anyway, if you can compare it to an MMORPG, you'd find many similarities. There are stat points showing up in your personal professional value on the social hubs. Unique modules are giving you, next to, the massive, next to a massive hit to your credit score, quite the advantage in your everyday life in the network. You can see the homeworld is a complex housing system. People are trying to earn the prestige by buying virtual goods and displaying them in their homeworld. Gamification has really found its way into our daily lives. I found that interesting because of how disparate it is to kind of how the network really has evolved. Most things are in fact free and that kind of has its own problems. Not kind of. It really does definitely have its own problems. But uh... Oops. I did the thing again. I keep wanting to press B to get out of the thing, but no, it's not B. It's start. Is this stairs? Yep, that's stairs. Data stairs! I'm a big sucker for it. I know this is com this is like such a stupid representation of computers in so many ways, um, but I'm just a big sucker for this and stuff in dot hack. It's like it's really not you know how one would reasonably visualize it, but I mean, how would you reasonably visualize it? But it's it's silly, but it I don't know. It has its own aesthetic, and I like it. Um, yeah, sort of like dot hacks, like exposing the code, like that doesn't make sense, but it's neat and people understand that that's like not supposed to happen and it's just kind of its own interesting thing. It's, you know, it's a, this is a suspension of disbelief thing. How you doing, my friend? Whoa, didn't think you'd notice, I don't think you, I didn't notice you jumping around my library like you had wings. Never seen that kind of mobility in Hyperion. You must be very special then. I like how he's like a VR avatar from like 2016, just hands and no face but head and tie. Mostly tie. I can assure you that you made the right choice of coming here. There are rumors about this place that I can say confidently that only the good ones are true. It's the greatest librarian Priperion has. Feel free to look around. But you only have like maybe a couple hundred books. I mean, fairly small for a library, if I must say. Like, I'm pretty sure my own parents have more books than this. They, my dad's quite a bookworm. Uh, what's this? The library is so big and full of interesting articles. I don't know where to start. I pity that the books are so high up. They'll not only be accessible if you have the proper mo movement modules. These modules are way too expensive to obtain. Besides, Arnold and I cannot remember seeing anyone in Hyperion who was able to remove, regardless of pseudo-gravity. This library is well known, and he gets lots of voluntary donations. To be honest, he probably deserves it. Probably get back to reading this article now. If he's so generous and smart, why did he build a freaking library nobody can use? Riddle me that, jerk. Yeah, the, the whole idea of, like, spending money for, like, you know, a simple module like that, like, that seems... You know, somebody would make a free version and distribute it, and then the paid version would die. That's that's how most of this stuff goes. There's a few exceptions where, like, you know, server hosting and stuff, where, like, there's real costs that can't really be avoided. But, like, in terms of just purely digital stuff, generally, you can make a free option, and it'll happen. I'm a little disappointed with how free things have turned out in some ways, but... For the most part, the internet has done good in terms of, of free things, in terms of open source and such, you know. Hold dash and jump together to speed jump vertically. Whoa! 
Okay. Holy crap. What is that? It's a person. Why is there a real human person here? It's, this That's kind of creepy. It has this like GeoCities feel to it. The, oh, I'm reading it backwards. The most emotional tunes. The best music from you sound. This is the voice I use when I'm logging advertising. Can you tell? These blocks start falling down when you step on them. We don't know where they came from, but they're so cool. Okay, so we've got gameplay mechanics. I really like the aesthetics of this area, by the way. The little huts in the distance. See, this is what I was hoping to see, pretty much. Like, like I said, I love the kind of stupid, but still its own aesthetic representation of, you know, digital worlds. Like, um, like Mega Man Battle Network. Like, that's not how anything works, but it's still interesting and cool in its own way. I don't know where I'm going. Wow, there's zero pieces left in this area? Where am I going, then? I figured this would be, like, considered a new map. Best avatar, human faceless baby man, woman thing, best. It's like, it's not even androgynous anymore. It's just adult baby. Like, huh. What, what is this? I like how everyone is just like polygons, but like there's best avatar. Freakish human thing. We're going to the moon! Daddy said the moon is made out of cheese. I want to eat it all. Your, your stomach will explode and you'll die, child. Do not fall, fly too close to the sun, Icarus. Folly leads there. I like the human advertisements and everyone is polygons. It's, it's so disparate. It's, the humans look so creepy. Buntrius. I love me some Buntrius. I inject some Buntrius in in my organs every night. Sponsored by SEO Social, the world's first company to introduce virtual meeting areas. Oh, this is what VR is going to be like. It's going to suck. Nah, VR is going to be alright. I have a PSVR. I haven't done videos because, like, how do I get there? The thing with VR stuff is that I get, I tend to get lower views on it, and it's a lot more work, so it's like a little discouraging. I don't do things for views, but it's definitely nice to be appreciated. Oh, that's the real exit. Okay. It, it, when you put in more work to get less, you know, a, you know, less people appreciate it. That's the thing about views. It's not just. Pff, it's a living ad. Oh my god! It's the real future. This is the future. Oh my god, no. <laughs> it's following me! That is amazing. Are you satisfied? This is... This is the... Oh my god, there's more! <laughs> it's fucking amazing! This is... This is the logical conclusion of mobile apps, but applied in VR. It's why I'm really scared of mobile VR stuff. Because... Because no. <laughs> because honey, no. A social company is... Oh no, it's the bad guys! Oh shit. They even look spooky. Pfft, I have like posture issues. Um, press escape or start to keep track of your current objective. I guess I'm just supposed to talk to people? It seems we've gotten pretty open ended. I, I was thinking this was going to be like platformer puzzler game, but it is instead intrigue digital world game, which is very much more my speed than puzzle jumpy world. So I'm glad I'm just it's a lot to take in. Anyway, that's that's about enough for today. We'll explore horrible social business company land tomorrow.